Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, you can call us a webinar if you want to, we don't mind. Um, but we cover a variety of topics that be of interest to librarians. Um, we do presentations, interviews, book reviews, uh, many training sessions, uh, basically anything that we can think of that um, if it has something to do with libraries, we'll put it on the show. Um, we have commission staff that go come on the show, our own Nebraska Library Commission people, and we have guest speakers as we have this morning. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, but they are and they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. You can always go to our website and look at the archives of all of our recordings that we have there. Um, this morning, as I was mentioning, as you can see on the screen, we have a uh, guest speaker with us this morning. Um, Jake Rundle from the Hastings Public Library is on the line with us. Hi, Jake. Good morning. Good morning. And he's going to talk to us about this very cool program they've done, been doing at the Hastings Public Library here in Nebraska. Um, I've been following along with it on Facebook. That's where I think I first saw it. <clears throat> you or someone from the library shared it, and I went looking for it. It's a very cool program. They have these story walks um, that they have um, during, this is the summer one that the slides are about there. Um, but you have one you're doing right now, I think, that just started. We just we just wrapped it up. Actually. Wrapped it up. Okay, mm -hmm. so even in the in the winter weather, you can do these. Um, but I'll just hand over to you, Jake, and you can go ahead and uh, take us through your presentation and tell us all about your story walks there. Sounds perfect. Cool. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like Krista said, my name is Jake. I'm the collections librarian at Hastings Public Library. Um, and last year we were introduced to something called Story Walk. Uh, a member, a staff member from the Hastings Museum sent me a message on Facebook said, hey, this is cool, you should do this. Um, and so it kind of grew from there uh, and became a very, very popular event last summer. Um, it became very fun in the downtown. And so I'm just going to take you through our slides. Um, and if you do have questions along the way, please do let Krista know. I love questions. Um, so to begin, the story walk is um, a, cr a project created by Ann Ferguson in Montpelier, Vermont. Um, and it was really there that it started. Um, this was what the uh, museum employee had seen and sent it on to me and to Amy and said, this is fun, we should try something like it. Um, but it worked well in Vermont, and then we just took it and adapted it and made it fun for Hastings. And so the goals for our project really were to increase literacy for families. Um, that's kind of one of the big pushes we've been hitting with our library, um, is to see if we can not get more families to come out and read. Um, we started itty bitty story times so that parents of very young children can um, take their kid to a story time, the ages are zero to two, excuse me, uh, and they can watch a librarian give a story time and do finger plays and kind of get a feel for how to read to their kids without having to be an expert at it. Uh, it also encouraged families to get out, get out to the, the various trails and parks in Hastings. Uh, our Parks and Rec keeps some beautiful spaces. Um, and so we just wanted to see if we couldn't add some incentive to encourage people to go visit those places. Uh, so we picked six locations in our first summer, um, all along different trails, um, along Hastings Parks, or um, kind of self-contained in parks. Uh, and it worked out very nicely. But our pilot project was um, at a place called Prairie Loft. It is a Education, it's an outdoor education center located about a mile west of Hastings. Um, we have a regional center out there, and it used to be, back in the 30s, a self-sustained um, farm that fed the people in the regional center. So there are old barns, and there's a giant acreage. And so that was given over to Prairie Loft to use. Um, and so they do a lot of education with students um, of all ages about ag and farming and um, outdoor, outdoorsy things. Um, they're a really great thing. They're a really great program, uh, but they have a spring fest every year. So what we did was took two stories. Uh, if you give a pig a pancake and uh, snowman in spring, and we, with the help of our friends at the public library group, um, put, took apart books, put them onto boards, and staked them into the ground, um, and then just gauged reaction from families to see if this was something that they thought that they could do 
all summer long if this was something that they thought was interesting and unique um, and if they were they would buy in and the response was great um, Amy is the one who was out there that day so she has the numbers I don't remember them <laughs> but it was um, a fairly popular event because um, Prairie Loft is a, quite a big place and so we could put two stories kind of far apart um, and walk them through the open areas and down some tree lines uh, so it gave kids a chance to go and see some various places of the Prairie Loft area um, and still read some great stories. And there's our picture, uh, start of, the start of our, if you give a pig a pancake, it went down a tree line um, and then came back. And then after that first uh, initial jump at Prairie Loft, we got together with a whole bunch of various Hastings agencies. Um, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the museum, and Parks and Rec, and the library really kind of worked together um, to get it up in the parks. Uh, we had sub supporting funds from the Kiwanis and from the Friends of the Public Library and from uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau and from the Highland Park Arboretum, which is uh, a park near the museum, and uh, all the other agencies kicked in some money so we could buy some nice stakes and some nice boards and you know, really pay for uh, laminating, which is quite, quite more expensive than one would think. Um, but so we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six locations plus downtown Hastings, um, and the downtown one was just a storybook we had taken apart and backed on colored paper, and then we asked businesses to put them up in their windows. And you start at the front, and there was a map, um, so you could walk downtown in the middle of summer. So if you were out shopping with family, you could still read a story. Um, and then it was just volunteer by business, and we didn't have to go begging for anybody. We said, hey, this is something we're doing. And we had enough initial response from downtown businesses that we didn't have to find extra people, uh, which was very nice. Um, we also had an I Spy treasure hunt um, that went out to the Summer Festival at Prairie Loft. Uh, we chose that one because you didn't have to read it in order, so we could put it all over because it's their Summer Festival is a music fest, and so it would have been a little difficult to read a story in, um, in page order while navigating through uh, 2,000 people. So we, <laughs> we tried to uh, make it as simple as possible for all the places we went. Um, we had a we had two um, Spanish st Spanish language stories with um, English subtitles. We um, kind of had to create those from scratch a little, um, but it worked out very well. We got to go we have, we got to go a lot of places um, in Hastings, and we tried to tailor the books we put there to the communities that lived there. So. Um, our two Spanish language stories were in our heavier Spanish-speaking population parks, um, and it worked out very well for us. Although, uh, I will say right now, having this many locations, um, essentially staffed by um, with the, the library and the museum basically split the story walk locations in half and said, we'll go check them every day to make sure there's nothing wrong with them. Um, that is very difficult to manage because a lot can happen. Uh, especially weather-wise last summer. Uh, when it wasn't raining, it was windy. When it wasn't windy, it was hot. Um, and that is a lot of wear and tear on, on your posts and on your pictures. And that doesn't even include um, the possibility of vandalism from your run-of-the-mill youth or adults. But what we did is took the stories. Uh, Vermont, there's a frequently asked questions page they'll put up at the very end that we got from Vermont when they found out that we were doing this and it's a great frequently asked questions kind of thing. They recommend you buy three books. We did that um, because the third book is for missing pages, vandalism and whatnot. So we took apart two of the books um, from the binding and then laid them out in order and then um, spray glued them onto colored paper, laminated that paper. Uh, and then Parks and Rec had installed posts with the, the boards on it, so then we went out and basically package taped and stapled um, the books to their boards. 
Uh, you can't see the back of this one, but essentially the laminate wraps around the sides. You can kind of see it there. The laminate wraps around the sides, and then you're stapled it. It wraps around the top and the bottom, and we stapled it there, and then we taped over the staples. Um, it was a lot of tape, a lot of reinforcement. Um, not the best way to do it. Um, we're trying to investigate some some prettier ways to make it happen this year. Um, but it did work, um, and a lot of our stories did make it the entire three months of summer um, without needing any real maintenance um, outside of reapplying some tape and replacing the story every now and then. Um, some things we learned that it really does take a lot of people, uh, more, more than four. <laughs> um, it was up to myself, um, one of the museum staff, and one person from the Convention Visitors Bureau to install the StoryWalk pages. Each page uh, really did take two people to do um, because one person would have to hold it in place while the person was stapling. Um, and 26 pages of children's storybook is a lot of storybook, um, especially on, you know, summer mornings in Nebraska. You really only get that window of about 10 minutes before it's too humid and too hot and you're miserable. Um, like it says in the second bullet, it's a lot more time consuming than it looks. You would think that you could just slap it on and go. Um, that is not the case. If you attach your pictures before you put your post in the ground, then your picture generally falls off or um, becomes unmounted from your board as you're piling it in. So that is why we put the stakes in first. That was something we learned from our pilot at Prairie Loft. And picking the right book really does make all the difference. Um, and there are so many great books to choose from. We chose um, some old ones, some new ones. This one was um, we picked because it meandered along the lake, and so we thought let's do something nonfiction so we can kind of get uh, something besides a story. Um, and this was an exotic animals one, so there was some really beautiful pictures of some very unique animals. Um, the problem with the lake, uh, as the next bullet point states, is use a protected area. Uh, the wind actually took out four of the stakes um, with stories on it. Some of them just went down, two of them went into the water. Um, we thought it was vandals for a time, but it was pointed out to us that when wind is hitting a big rectangle uh, at 40 miles an hour for most of the evening, a lot of, a lot of magic can happen and that thing will fly. <laughs> Um, and, and with that, the ongoing maintenance then, you really do need to set out two hours of your day or a staff member's day um, to go and check on them, make sure that if there's water that's gotten in, you can try to get it out as quick as possible. Um, check to make sure all your posts have stood up, um, pick them back up or restuff them into the ground if they've broken off at the bottom. Um, there's just an incredible amount of work that you have to think about uh, and then you multiply that by six locations um, and it just it got very very difficult for a while but it is incredibly rewarding the feedback we got from parents and from kids was fantastic um, there was a morning I was going to check on storywalk pages and I saw a mom and daughter and they were reading the first page and mom said okay now let's bunny hop to the second one so this five-year-old girl and this mom uh, bunny hopped to the second story and then the little girl read it out um, as best she could and mom helped her and then they bear crawled to the third page uh, but it was truly a great interaction between a mom who was interested in helping her child learn to read as well as stay physically active because you don't have to you know bear crawl to the next page but it is an additional physical activity uh, that really makes the story walk a great outside tool like I mentioned, the downtown business option, um, you just take the pictures, put them onto pretty paper, and then ask your downtown businesses if they'd be interested in sticking them in the windows. Uh, because then it's a story walk that you can do at any time. The business doesn't have to be open for you to go and experience the story. We just wrapped up um, our winter, our late winter story walk. It started in March and ran until the first weekend of May. Uh, it was the seven blind mice. It started at the library and ended at the library and then went in a loop throughout the whole downtown. Um, we made a Google map um, so you could find it online. You could find it on our Facebook StoryWalk page. Uh, 
or you could just read the the map at the, for, on the first page too. Um, but it's it's a, that's a great book because it's few words. It's very high interest with the pictures and the colors, uh, and businesses really enjoy putting it out because it's fairly it's basically zero maintenance for them. Other than yes, I'd like to have something that might drive traffic to my store. Uh, so it's 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 encouraging for them and it's good for you and it um, gets your patrons, your children and your adults outside walking through your business district, which is always a bonus. The Story Walk project in Portland, Maine um, is a little different. They're, they're kind of the Ferrari, in my opinion, about what Story Walk could be. They talked with um, publishers to get permission to reprint and they worked with an illustrator. Um, so this is actually uh, you're seeing from the top of the the book page to the bottom of the orange squares that is what they put into their story walk page and so it is the, the story walks page plus um, it has actions that they had illustrators work with uh, as you go from page to page and they tried to incorporate the story as much as possible so in this one it's chase your tail spin in circles and one's about birds it was flap your wings um, those, and it's just some incredibly fun things to do. Uh, the Storywalk Portland, Maine, um, as well as Storywalk Vermont, have their um, pages available. Um, and there's more on that at the end. But you can recreate this um, with some money, uh, of course. But uh, you can do the same great things that they do with your logos. Something to consider is other locations. You might not have a park. You might be more urban. You might be uh, in the mountains where you can't put things into the ground. Um, this is really a chance for you to be creative with your outdoor spaces. Um, essentially, the only thing you really need to think about is, will my story pages stay there in all kinds of weather, and will I have something to put in its place should weather or vandals um, put it, take it down? Uh, but the possibilities are limitless. You can go anywhere outside, anywhere there's families, um, really, and uh, make a great story walk experience. Um, <laughs> the story walk main uh, is on the right. Glenview Parks, I'm not sure where that's at, um, is the pictures on the left. But this is what we want to turn our story walk into, permanent fixtures with um, laminate coverings so that when you install the story walk it is protected from the wind it is protected from um, the rain it's not going to blow over in a windstorm because it's sunk three feet into the ground with concrete um, and that's really what we're hoping to to work toward uh, we've applied for a blue cross blue shield grant we're still waiting to hear back from but it is our hope to put two permanent story walks in uh, this summer and into fall, and then continue to add permanent story walks to each of this, um, the parks in Hastings um, every year as we get more money, um, or as we, we get money from people who are interested in helping out and from businesses um, who would like to underwrite it. So the, our grand plan is really to make a permanent space uh, in each of the parks so that we can put out new stories every season or um, for special occasions. Um, there's a park that has a fireworks display every summer, so putting something out there would be great because then you could change your story just for that two-day period where there's going to be a whole bunch of people in that park. Uh, and then finally, success, suggestions for your success. Um, fewer locations with more books is a good plan because then if something comes down or you end up missing 30% of your pages, all you have to do is trade out a story for a story. Um, that's something we didn't think about. We thought, oh, more spaces, one book for the whole summer, um, which is great, but um, it's sometimes a miracle how paper, um, how quickly paper can degrade in sun and heat and wind and water. Um, so if you plan for fewer locations and more books, you can trade them out. Um, there's some work involved in the trade out, but it really makes up for it in the um, the variation for your patrons. Uh, involve your business community is also huge. 
we had so many business partners and organization partners when we did our story walk. Um, and it really made it helpful because then you're just sharing the, the financial burden and the, manu the, the work burden among um, a greater group of people. <laughs> uh, this is Amy's daughter, Catherine. She was at the Give a Pig a Pancake, and it was her job to uh, start children and their parents along the story walk path. Uh, so it doesn't ever hurt to hire a tour guide. Um, hire, put someone in place, volunteer, uh, a passionate parent to, um, you know, really coach other reluctant parents in um, going about and helping, uh, helping experience the outdoor of Story Walk. The public library also does other outdoor adventures, um, we call them. We do a pub quiz twice a month at two local bars. It's just trivia. Um, Tomorrow, tonight, today's Wednesday. Tonight we are doing Star Wars trivia because May the 4th was this weekend, and so we're going to do Star Wars trivia. And then the last Thursday of this month in Hastings, we're doing Star Trek trivia because the Star Trek movie comes out. And if you do Star Wars, you must do Star Trek in order to appease the nerd gods um, and keep everything equal. equal. Um, we have a library on the go program at um, our local hospital. We go there once a month and offer programs about our databases, our new online things. Um, we took our imagination playground lunch, uh, which is a gigantic set of essentially foam Legos um, and let the, the adults build. Um, Caregiver's Day Out is a, a yearly event where the it's a, basically a big party for the care for people who care for others in the community, um, and so we go out there. Healthy Kids Day is similar, National Night Out similar to that. Um, sometimes it's just a table, sometimes we um, really get out and plan and do some great things. Um, so there are quite a few other outside of the library walls um, events that we do in a year, and it's our hope to kind of expand on that because as uh, people's work lives get crazier, and as the library becomes more digital, people are not looking for books in the library necessarily, but they're looking for the library to come to them with programming and ideas and assistance. So, are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Jake. Um, yes, does any, if anybody has any questions, oh, we do have one that just popped in, yep. Um, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just type them into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface, and I can pass them on to Jake. If you have a microphone, let me know, and we can unmute you, and you can talk on on the show just like Jake and I are. Um, that was very, very cool. Yes, I was wanting to know how you pulled it off and how it all happened there. <laughs> um, I don't get to head out to Hastings very much. It's a little ways west of here. Um, not too far, but um, so, uh, but we, huh? <laughs> It's far enough. It's far enough, yes. <laughs> um, I do hear a lot about your pub, your pub quizzes, though. That's very, that's, I always want to attend those things. <laughs> um, but we do have yeah, some questions here. Um, any copyright issues with doing this with the books? Um, Anything that is about? an interesting question. Um, the, I my screen is still up. Um, yep, we see it. OK. Uh, Vermont actually took care of this. As long as you are purchasing the books, um, you're really entitled to do as much as you want with them as long as you do not alter it in any way. Mm -hmm. they can, the pages can't be rescanned or reproduced. What Vermont did is they took the books apart, mounted them onto cardstock, laminated them, and put them up. Um, what Storywalk Maine did was actually talked with publishers and got permission uh, and pay, or paid for permission to add those illustrations to the bottom and then reproduce it by printing it all as one page. Right, they got a special deal. They went direct to the publisher yep. to do something yep. special with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, I won't Google search now because I don't know how quickly I can get there, but um, you can actually pay Storywalk Portland, Maine, um, or the, the overarching body that kind of spawned that creation, and you can, um, you can buy the pages for stories that they've already done, that they already have permission to reprint. Um, you just have to pay the rights. You have to pay for the rights, essentially, um, to Portland, Maine, and then they send you the file, and you can, pub you can print it at your local publishing company with hmm. your library logo. Um, so they really do make well, it that's nice. Because I was thinking about, yeah, how would other libraries get in touch with publishers <laughs> to do this? But 
Portland has arranged for the fact that we've already got done basically the hard work for you of making mm -hmm. this connection. Mm -hmm. So now just come to us and we can get you um, what you need to actually pull it off. Absolutely. That's and cool. what Portland what Portland has also done is on uh, top of printing pages to put into those permanent structures with the two by fours and the plastic and the all that fancy. They've also taken to printing um, Oh, I forget the substance. Uh, the stuff that they put on camp the, the campaign signs, that plastic kind of corrugated uh, plastic stuff, hmm. uh, they're putting posters, they're putting story, printing story pages onto those um, because then it allows them to really wherever there is grass and they can stick the metal tines of a, of a campaign sign, there, there, there can be a story walk. Hmm. Um, okay, yeah, just they, an easy thing to just throw up, yeah. Um, Absolutely, and they have instructions for that on the Portland, the Storywalk Portland, Maine. Um, if you do a Google search for it, you can find it fairly quickly. Um, I don't have it up off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah, now I'm, I'm I've uh, as usual what we do here in the show. Some of you on the, know this. Um, we put into the Nebraska Library Commission's Delicious account any links related to an episode. So I've been adding some things there. I'm still looking for the Portland's official one, but I've got Vermont in there. I've got yours, and we'll have all those links for you um, afterwards. And if, if Jake, you find some stuff later, you can always just email me, and we will add whatever to the list. Absolutely. Um, Okay. And the, the the FAQ that the I will send you the the, the FAQ as well, Krista, to put up on the slideshow. Yeah, definitely. We can put it in there. Yeah. Because okay. mm -hmm. this, I mean, this really does cover a lot of the basics for um, the, the the simplest story walk, which is to cut apart the books, mount them, and put them on posts. Mm -hmm. um, and and they they covered a lot of the bases. Um, and all they ask really is, I mean, on the first page. Um, you note that it's uh, created by Ann Ferguson in Montpelier, Vermont. Right, and credit her, and that's it, yep. Yeah, credit her. Storewalk is a registered trademark, and I mean, but really, mm. she was, uh, we got an email from her, and she's excited that uh, we're bringing this to Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I plan on letting her know that we were, uh, the, the, about the recording here, so that she can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, watch it as well. It's, it's exciting when librarians have great ideas and then say, "Here, go do them." Do that this, yeah. Hard. Take my idea and do it. Yeah, we're usually mm -hmm. about all about sharing. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have a question about the books themselves. So, you had to go out and like buy extra copies of whatever books you wanted to to yes. use for this. Mm -hmm. Then, okay. So it's not necessarily take the ones that you already have in the collection, of course, because you need those for Correct. the people to check out, and if they want to take them home, right. them later. Um, we went to our local bookstore um, and bought the three. We we mm -hmm. had him order us the copies so we could keep it all local. Um, cool. And we made sure that any book we did purchase, we had one that was added to the collection, mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't already, so that if someone read it outside, they could go to the library and there it was they could check it out as well. And they wanted to take it home with it. Yeah, to do that. That's yep. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, someone did make a comment here that this is a really great idea, and that apparently the 2016 summer reading program theme is fitness and health. Okay. So thinking way ahead <laughs> to <laughs> then, um, that would be something definitely if, people, if you guys are still continuing doing this, which obviously it seems like there would be no reason not to, um, mm -hmm. that, that would definitely be something to think ahead to that it could go along with that. But it could even you know go along with any of them. Um, isn't the current... Dig into reading. Dig into reading current. is this year's, yeah. You could totally yeah. do it with that. You know, be careful. The you know books that are about digging and being outside and and everything. Um, you could totally use those as a, a theme for it and put it connected to your summer reading program. Mm -hmm. So anything that's outdoorsy related, um, exactly. to go along I, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can tailor your your story choices to be um, about uh, you know an easy nonfiction book about digging up dinosaur fossils or. Uh, moles or also I mean really the the project itself lends itself to be uh, really adaptable for whatever you would like uh, mm -hmm. because you can either plan it by location or by story um, or both to mm -hmm. really get the most bang for your buck yeah oh and Beth who's online is saying the 2014's theme 2014 theme for some reading is science and 2015 is heroes okay those, those. Also, for planning ahead. 
Uh-huh. Sure, you can find things related to that, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You could do all sorts of stuff with heroes and story walks. I'm just imagining, you know, fly to your next page. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I like that idea of that mother and daughter doing the um, – now, did they take that from, like, the, the animals that were on the pages, or did she just make up doing the bunny hop? I think, and she the... was just, I think it was just the mom making it up. Uh, um, okay. Because I saw you had said that one book that was all the letters that were animals and everything, the alphabet mm-hmm, that was the animals. Mm-hmm. No, this was um, Llama Llama Red Pajama <laughs> they were reading. <laughs> um, but it, – and, and, you can put instructions for those kind of things if you'd like, as long as you don't alter the storybook page. So mm-hmm. it's part of your grand mapping out on the page. Um, or like what Portland, Maine did was they incorporated that when they reprinted it. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, well, you just put a separate piece of paper, a it separate page there with that. the page from the book next to it that is um, laminated mm-hmm. into the into the that particular on that particular post. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can you can add a lot um, without having to pay the, the the publisher for reprinting mm-hmm. rights. I mean, you just have to you know kind of visually think about well, how much is too busy on a page um, mm-hmm. in terms of laying out your pages. But right. there it's there are lots of fun things you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a new question that just came in. Um, okay. Is there any liability to the library if a child is injured while doing a story walk? Uh, not for us because the we put them all in public parks. Mm-hmm. I would um, think it would go to the be the, the park parks, yeah. that has the to be, the department takes yeah. that. Um, and I, I'm not certain what kind of insurance policy a public park has to have, but the parks can right. take um, the the responsibility of injury um, since it's theirs. It's in theirs on their mm-hmm. land, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so we basically, same as any time, anything you do in a public park, that would handle it, it would be handled the same way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we work with the Parks and Rec guys um, really to, you know, to find the best place to put the stories so that they wouldn't get mown over in the summer um, mm-hmm. and that they could take care of them properly and that um, they were close enough to walking paths to be readable, but far enough so that if someone you know took a spill on a bike, they wouldn't gouge out an eyeball. <laughs> so I mean, right. if you have, and they would know all that, yes. <laughs> yeah, to work with your parks guys, um, guys and gals, I suppose, to to figure out the best path, and um, and those kind of things. Then you just take a little bit of that resp- I mean, take some of that liability away from everybody because they're the experts. Mm-hmm. Right. They know how people use their parks. They know what they need to do for all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I do like the idea of the um, the ones. The thing that Portland is doing, and whichever the other one was with the more permanent signs. That reminded me more mm-hmm. of those kind of historical markers that you see in parks Absolutely. or at historic sites. Mm-hmm. So it would be mm-hmm. that same kind of thing. Um, now, is that where they're like I, some of those historical markers? It's obvious that it's papers put underneath the plexiglass or whatever. But sometimes it appears it's actually printed onto the plexiglass, like permanently. Is oh. that um, that's what they look uh, like sometimes when I see them? Do you know which way that you guys it's would be? Printed, it's printed page underneath. Okay. Um, is how we do it probably because then it just gives us options for trading can, out halfway through summer. Um, right. Change it out for different stories when you want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be the the hopeful goal. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We we're price checking materials, and it's it's about fifteen hundred dollars for lumber and plexiglass and all the screws and lug nuts and whatnot um, mm. for uh, two seventeen pages uh, for two two books roughly seventeen pages in length. Um, no. We're gonna make. I think we're gonna put in. 8, 16, 32 posts, 34 posts, something like that was, mm-hmm. was what we asked for in the grant. Um, and that's, you know, that's about $2,000 in, in equipment costs um, when you do labor um, <laughs> and then putting them into the ground and cementing them there. So right. it's not, it's, I mean, to do it permanent like that, it's not cheap, mm-hmm. but it is, I mean, you get, you get your bang for your buck then. Because oh, then definitely. You, Replace it year after year after year. Um, uh, take some, you know, set some money away yearly to scrape off any spray paint that ends up on there somehow mm-hmm. magically. And uh, having the permanent ones will into mean that you'd be hopefully be able to do, 
do, excuse me, a lot less ongoing maintenance because you don't have the, right. the ones that they're not going to blow away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be able to pull them out of the ground and steal them or anything like that. Right. And, so. and it's, it's surprising. I mean, we picked pretty sturdy um, fence posts. That's uh, what it looked but, like, yeah, in the pictures. But, but when the wind, uh, you know, when it's just 30-mile gusts for, you know, eight hours in the overnight, that post will either wiggle itself out or it'll bend itself completely over, mm. uh, and then you have to break it off, pull out the, the the tiny stump, and then by the end of summer you have all these story walks of varying heights, <laughs> <laughs> kind of meandering through this park. Uh, um, and and it got yeah. to be towards the end. Um, we were we of the six locations, we did just pull a couple and just and let everyone know on the Facebook page that hey, the story walk at this park is closed for the year um, because it really did get to be, we would have had to have bought three more books to replace all the pages. Um, mm. And the, the, the plywood had um, gotten wet um, and water had seeped in, and so it just became really more work than it was worth at some of them. So mm -hmm. um, start small would be my encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, experiment with one, see how it goes, yeah. I like the one, the idea of the ones that you had on the windows in town, too, if you're looking for something mm -hmm. even less um, labor-intensive, yeah. getting together with the businesses, and then you're just pasting things up in their windows. Because um, then a lot of your cost is for the books and materials. You can have library volunteers put the pages together. You can have your, your business, uh, your downtown business administration or uh, your convention visitors bureau, whomever in your city um, or your town, if there's someone of that, to, to go to the businesses or you can go to your chamber of commerce and uh, you know, solicit them to ask their members if they'd mm -hmm. be interested in doing this because it just drives people to their business. Uh, so it's a win for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Uh, so there's not a lot of work on your end aside from you know picking stories and then paying to get them done up. But then, and then you just sit back and watch people enjoy their stories, um, and give you feedback for fix for changes next year. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that being a cool thing. I know I've liked going through towns and um, here or New York, wherever where they have the the different the the windows done up at Christmas time. You always want to see the next one. What's the one at the next store look like? What do they do on their window mm -hmm. for the scene? And this will definitely, if people do that already, you're just going to see how the windows are decorated and what's in them. And this will, you know, be even even more so. They're going to want to do the whole thing until they get to the end of the story. Exactly. <laughs> Got to see exactly. how it ends. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, any other questions, comments, uh, suggestions, or ideas from the audience? You can type them into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface here. We'll see if there's anything, any last minute. Nobody's typed anything in yet while we were chatting here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I found an article here about the Portland one. Um, don't know if it has a link to anything. Yeah, I'll keep looking for the Portland page. <laughs> um, <laughs> doesn't look like anything new has come in. Just some thank you so much. Great idea. Love this idea from Laura Hess out there at Stanton. Mm. Um, so I think if nobody has any last-minute urgent questions uh, for Jake while we're on the line here, um, we can wrap it up for this morning. You do have his email and Amy's email there. Um, I think it's Curious City is the Curious overarching City. Portland. I can't spell to save my life today. <laughs> um, Curious City, Portland. There we go. Ah, okay. And so, librarians, educators, booksellers, bloggers. Um, and then from here, you can kind of wander around um, and find the Story Walk page, but it It'll give you a breakdown in prices um, um, for um, purchasing from from store at Portland, Maine, already done things. Move their website. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Ah, okay, they've got a, their own name, CuriousCity.net, yep. Cool. Yeah. And then the, there's, this is a great, this was a great resource for me um, because they, they, 
had uh, links to their Flickr page so you could see what it looked like. Mm -hmm. um, part of the, the money that they got um, for um, their Stray Rock project was to rehabilitate a park um, and make it make it fancy. Um, so so there's some just, I mean, they just did a lot of really cool work. Mm -hmm. um, so up there at the top under where it says children's book marketing, is that where they were, you could get in touch with them about you said, purchasing um, the... Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. I just want this part. Ugh. And that's hard today. <laughs> let's see here. Because I know it was the, this one right here, the Curious City DPW. Um, okay. Because then they talk about um, their um, pricing and um, and they've changed it since I was here last, so it's hard to find it again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, where books and kids meet, uh, Department of Public Works. There we go. Um, and so it's the Curiosity DPW. Um, and you might Bank have to just activity kits, yep. Um, to find to find exactly what you're looking for, but that is okay. That curiosity site is going to have a lot of the pricing stuff because they broke it. Uh, Vermont breaks it down to posts and plywood and laminate, so about two hundred fifty dollars to three hundred dollars per book. Um, curiosity went a step further and said, if you wanted to put it on the campaign sign stuff, this is what it costs to buy the rights from us and reprint it with your logo. You know, this. I mean, they give you options for uh, adapting or um, ballparking it for your own community, um, mm -hmm. and and that's certainly something um, you can give them a call. I called them because they had um, the, those the Ferrari Story Walk um, enclosure and with the big board and the plexiglass and all that fun stuff. Um, I asked if I could get the plans for that. Um, and they were really accommodating and giving me all sorts of help and ideas um, and finding me those things. Uh, so they're all they're they're willing to share their ideas, share their expertise. Mm -hmm. um, Vermont is, and Maine both. Mm -hmm. so right. Definitely, definitely resources to look at if you're thinking you want to do something like this in your town or city. Cool. Okay, great. Um, and then somebody asked about the FAQ, so you're, you'll email me that document that you are showing. That. Yeah. I'll email you this PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. uh, this proper presentation. Um, yep, and, and then we'll put these both up. The, the FAQ and the PowerPoint will be up on the commission's um, SlideShare account um, when we get all the recording done, and I'll post it up there for everyone. Cool. cool. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. Well. Um, I think we'll wrap it up for the morning then. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Jake. This is very cool. I hope they do this in more towns. Uh, it would be cool if they did it here in Lincoln where I can just go down on the street and do it. But <laughs> um, um, we're getting lots of comments coming, great information, and thank you. Mm -hmm. um, our StoryWalk page on Facebook is facebook.com slash Hastings StoryWalk. Mm -hmm. um, if you do happen to do this in your town, you know, shoot us a picture of it. We'd love to see what you guys are doing. Um, and share with our readers that if they're going on vacation somewhere in Nebraska or elsewhere, they have a store walk they can experience in right. towns and cities all over. Absolutely, yeah. Go and visit other ones in other towns. Mm -hmm. Make it a thing. <laughs> Lots of people do that. They say, I'm going to go to every Ripley's, believe it or not, museum in the country. That's my thing I do everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> and librarians, we go and visit whatever the public library is, wherever we exactly. go. <laughs> we just can't not do that. <laughs> Okay, um, over here. All right, doesn't look like any more last-minute questions or comments coming in. So thank you very much, Jake. This was very cool, um, very fun uh, project. And thank you, everyone, for attending. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my computer here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you very much, Jake, for uh, sharing this with you, with us. Um, and like I said, it was it is being recorded, so the recording will be up. All of the links we put up, we do put our archive shows up here on the website, as you can see here, Archive Encompass Live Sessions. So you can see afterwards, here's last week's, we'll have links, PowerPoint presentation, and the recording will be available.
So that will wrap it up for this morning. I hope you'll join us next week on Encompass Live when our topic, um, the title is University of Nebraska in Your Neighborhood. Um, we are going to have staff from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln Extension Office telling us about the different programs and services they offer um, through libraries or that just your library can help your users um, use. So we'll have someone from the UNL Extension Office on the line with us. So I hope you'll sign up um, and join us for that. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook, so you can like us on Facebook, and you'll see all of our posts about upcoming shows are put up here. Uh, when the recordings are available, we post up here. Um, if we find any other links or information that's related to a show, sometimes we'll share that. And we'll also remind you when a new one is about to start. So definitely, if you are a Facebook user, um, like us on Facebook and keep up with what we're doing there. Um, and if you are a Nebraska library and you're interested in getting, um, for, for watching these shows, you do, you can earn, if you're a Nebraska library working toward um, certification, you can get continuing education credits for watching our Encompass Live shows, both live and recorded. Um, and if you're looking for more educational opportunities for that kind of thing, you can also, um, we encourage you to join up and participate in our Nebraska Learns 2.0 program. This is our 23 Things program that we have, where we have, um, expanded it instead of just a limited time we every month we offer a new thing that you can learn a new service a new product something techie maybe and you can earn continuing education credit credits for this uh, this month we're having you look through the webby awards awards for websites um, online movies mobile apps anything um, pick one of your choosing so you get to do whatever you want and tell us what you think of it um, we also offer a book thing every month where we suggest a book um, that is what we think related to libraries or librarianship some Sometimes it may be an obvious relation, sometimes it may be a little, what does that have to do with us? Um, this month we've got Confessions of a Public Speaker. If you're actually doing any present presenting like Jake just did or you're interested in doing it, this could definitely help you out with that. Um, you could read the book, write a short little book review of it and earn CE credits for that as well. Um, now this is just, you know, the continuing education credits are only for Nebraska libraries. I do know we have people who watch our show from all over. Um, but feel free to go here and check out what we have offered here and check in with your continuing education coordinator in your states and they may also possibly offer you credit for doing our programs and our uh, lessons that we offer here. So if there's nothing else coming in, no, I don't see it. Thank you very much for attending this week and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.